The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN. We kick off the Friday action about 24 minutes to go until the opening bell, and we got markets in positive territory. S&Ps extending quite a week we have going on. We're above 5,600. We're positive by 11 points, about two-tenths percent in the green right now, and the S&P is trading at 56.13. We hit about 56.17 in the overnight. We're now only about 100 points away from all-time highs as we push the highs recently back to September 3rd, 10 days ago. That high out there, 56.69, as I mentioned, trading at 56.14. We take a look at the weekly, and yeah, how about it, right? Boy, that was quite a week last week. Looked like the writing was on the wall. And then kaboom, we're up 214 points this week alone in the S&Ps, and we're up by 11 today. And as our man Basil Chapman says, the day is young. We jump over to the NASDAQ 100, basically flat overnight, 19,446 right now. You see the bars on a weekly basis. Dow, how about it? Quite a bar on the weekly, up 106 points in the pre-market, about a quarter percent. And the Russell. back to a short-term time frame, Russell up 23 points, man. The Russell is now up almost 100 points from Wednesday's low. We're trading at 21.55 right now. One of the stories in the morning, how about it? Gold, trading at levels the world has never seen before, folks. Check it out. We're breaking away from this consolidation area. This is a daily. We zoom in on the action yesterday, back to a 15 minute to see the acceleration yesterday. 25.40 to 2580 we're up another 23 dollars right now we're above 2600 for the first time ever in the yellow precious metal and check it out now one thing i was looking at last night right the first move on gold there's been many moves this is just going back a year but in february you break from about that 2000 mark you run up to 2400 okay and then Depending on where this is going to make that second run, as in you had a $400 run on the first leg, maybe you get another $400 run. And maybe that run begins at 2300 Maybe it begins at 2400 So you're talking about between 27 to 2800 somewhere. And then that's just a simple uh, trading range, as in gold breaks 400 We consolidate, and maybe you make a similar break of 400 Now you back this thing up on a, a weekly. It's been a pretty solid run from 1600 You chop around at 2000 we're at 2600 and then, boom, you put it on the monthly, right? This is an interesting one where if you're really comparing the same thing, you back things up to the lows of 2001, right around when my dad started his gold report. Let's just call it $300 for simple math. It's about $250. let us call it $250, something like that. You make it up to $1950. That's a $1,700 run in gold, okay? Let's say that same run, if you take the pullback from the 50 percent maybe you take this area it begins its run in september of 2018 point being that's going to bring you somewhere between about 2700 and 2900 what i'm doing there is i'm taking the 1700 run it had initially and folks this is a run that lasted a decade okay from june of 2001 until august of 2011 almost june right a 10-year run and what's intriguing is you know, you're talking about if you take this low, that would be a run until the beginning of 2026 if you had a similar 10-year run. If you take this area, maybe, that would be a run until the middle of 2018 for 10 years. But what's remarkable is you're talking about a run from 1,200, okay, and we're at 2,600. And a 1,700-point run would run you up to 2,900 or something like that. Remarkable moves for gold. Nonetheless, we're up $25 on gold right now. There's your 15-minute chart. And as you can see, even in the last hour or so, gold trading up above $2,600. All right, we jump over to the dollar. As you'd expect, when we have gold strength, some dollar weakness. We're down a full dollar from where you were early yesterday. Dollar weakening yet again. We're at 100.89 right now on the dollar. You're down by 46 ticks. We jump over to yields. Your 10-year right now, we're positive by 7 ticks in the 10-year. And just jumping around, you're talking about a 10-year yield right now. 
3.65%. We put this on a daily, and yeah, just chopping around a little bit, I guess. You know, we're right where we were on that initial spike on September 6th, and how remarkable that August 5th spike, we're actually above it. Remember, that was the yen, that was the unwind, that was the spike. You now have yields below where we were at that price point. Pretty remarkable in that context, right? All right, what else we got going on? Okay, we jump over to the VIX. Back to a little bit of a weekly. Let's put it on a daily even. And yeah, remediating back to the mean. 16.9, pretty close to the historical average, about 16 on the VIX. VIX right now, basically down about 16 pennies, trading at 16.91. And we got to check in on crude. Crude, we spiked to $65 on Tuesday. We just got above $70, $69.98 right now. If you're thinking about filling up the gas tank, go do it. Because in the last few days, crude is up from 65 we're at 65 handle on Wednesday as well. Yesterday, you trade higher. We're trading at $70 in the price of crude. But as I mentioned, gold is going to be one of the stories. You jump over to silver right now. Check it out. Silver, $30.76. We take a look at the longer time on silver. Now, we've really had a couple dramatic spikes on silver that pushed us way above these levels. Gold at all-time highs. Silver's had a couple spikes up to almost $50. What did we get to? $49.82 in 2011 and $50 back there in the 80s. But we're trading at 3076. We're not even above where we were in May, which is remarkable, though. When you put it in that context, gold is remarkably strong right now. When you put it to even where we are in the dollar, even where we are with silver, you jump over to the dollar yen. Yen strengthening down to 140.54. And who knows? We might get a 139 handle on yen by the time the day is out. We're trading right now down a buck 21. At 40.57, we were at 143 yesterday, folks, and we just hit 140.36. And again, you take a look at the daily, and we got the low out there to start the year of 140.24, and we just got to 141. No, excuse me, 140.36. So within 12 pennies. Look at how quickly that run has been. July 10th, the yen was as weak as 162 and you're at 140.58 we got that exacerbated roll in august and you're now actually below where you were on that august which is remarkable 140.54 the yen looks to strengthen dollar looks to weaken and uh yeah that is putting quite an acceleration into the gold contract we're up by 25 dollars right now we jump around to some of the magnificent seven quite a few days i mean look at amazon amazon's up 17 dollars. amazon is up 10 percent from where it was trading Sunday night, right? Is that right? Is that Friday? No, that's last Friday. You did get a spike initially. Yeah, a week ago. A week ago at the end of Friday's action, yeah. 17, we're up 10% on an equity like Amazon. Remarkable, let alone NVIDIA, right? What are we up on NVIDIA? We're up 18% on NVIDIA. Almost 20 from where it was yesterday or Friday. Quite an exacerbated low on Friday. Markets rebounding spectacularly. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft. Look at that. Up $26 from where you were on Friday. We jump over to Apple shares. A little bit of a different story as their event this week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll take a look at some other equities. We'll take a look at Boeing as their workers are on strike. There's the speed. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. 
Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. we got about 12 minutes to go until the opening bell. We check out some of the equities with action this morning. There's your chart of Boeing, as if they need more issues. Now, this one's been on the table for a while, okay? This is a daily chart of Boeing. You have your earnings trading lower on August 1st. And then we have an acceleration with the market, of course, that takes us lower, as in the market made those lows on September 6th as well, right? The market has rebounded pretty spectacularly this week that's talking about uh, but don't think this is going to be some shocker okay this was coming down the pipeline in terms of the battle that's going on between Boeing and their union and they are on strike as of midnight and yeah you know you got a new CEO that's vowing to quote unquote reset labor relations that can mean a lot of things right uh, but members of the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers which represents 33,000 Boeing employees across the U.S. West Coast. Stop work at midnight on Friday. Hundreds of workers man the picket lines at the Renton factory outside Seattle that makes their top-selling aircraft, the 737 MAX. You ever heard of that 737 MAX before? I think I've seen that in a couple headlines recently. Shares of Boeing were down a bit. Uh, the stock's fallen 38% this year. Yeah, as they have issues, to put it lightly. But check out the voting percentages. 94.6 rejected Boeing's offer, and 96% supported the strike. 96% of people don't support anything these days. Uh, they want more pay, and they're coming for it, man. And it is especially interesting having a new CEO in there. As in, it's, it's double-edged, right? In one aspect, she can come in with the idea that 
nothing matters from before and we're going to reset the conversation. The other part of that is that she's coming in new and, and does she have, you know, the support and ability for her employees? Um, yeah. And they're coming off some tough, tough years in the past in terms of where they are and what they've been doing. So Boeing's offer didn't compensate for 16 years. This is the union, of course. 16 years of stagnated wages, higher out-of-pocket health care costs, and the relocation of thousands of union jobs. There's a lot at stake here for our members, so I'm proud of them. And we're going to get back to the table as quickly as we can. Boeing says committed to resetting our relationship with our employees and the union. And we're ready to get back to the table and reach a new agreement. Not surprising. Uh, but nonetheless, bottom line is they're at a disagreement, man. Yeah, and this is what I want to – so – You have the new CEO vowed to reset him. And the offer they were looking at, okay, was 25% guaranteed wage increases over four years. Workers had expected far greater. I was seeing something about the fact that they were looking for 40% over the next three years. And what's to keep in mind here is this is to make up for some of the contracts that they've had previously. This is not a situation like UPS where they've had those wage gains over the last four years where they had a contract. They have had stagnated wages, and so this is a little bit of catch-up that they have going on here. Yeah. So they're going to pick it at about 30 company sites from California to Moses Lake in eastern Washington because the union is claiming an unfair labor practices strike. A mediator will be assigned. Yeah. The battle's on, man. And they're way away from where they are. And it was surprising, actually, that you saw this spike because this writing was on the wall, man. I was listening to this, digging into this yesterday or the day before. Maybe yesterday, maybe even Tuesday. And yeah, that's why you're seeing a rebound here because this is priced in to a certain degree. This was happening. You don't get a 96% vote. The The moment that it came out that Boeing's offer was 25% and the union was looking for 40% over the next three years, uh, yeah. So a 50-day walkout would clip between 3 and $3.5 billion from Boeing's cash flow. You're dealing with a lot of employees, though. Billions add up, but boy, they have quite a uh, employee base. What did they say, 33,000 employees? What did I say at the beginning? I think so, right? What are we at? How many employees? Come on. So right at the top, sure is 33,000. Yeah, so Boeing's on strike. We move on from there. All right, let's check out some other equities moving as we got about five or six minutes until the opening bell. You jump over to Restoration Hardware. How about it, man? You talk about a pop. So Restoration Hardware, up as much as 20%, 21%, stronger than expected second quarter, a buck 69 in adjusted earnings on $830 million in revenue. The market was looking for about a buck 56 on 825 demand accelerated into the third quarter and, ex and the company expects that to continue into 2025 now you want to see a couple of cool charts of this thing man if you're not familiar with this thing who uh, a pandemic darling to put it lightly there's your daily goes back a year there's your weekly you start to see the run and there's the monthly that brings it all into context. Uh, so remarkable. You come into COVID at about 200, give or take. You have quite a run-up in the final, look at that run-up, in the final three months, final six months of 2019. You basically double even more than that in share price. As you go from $85 up to 213, you dip lower to 73, and then you run to $744. You consolidate in the middle of 2021, and then you give it all back to where we were pre-COVID at $200, and we've just been chopping around since then. Now, you're going to open it about 307. Okay, so all I'll say is we got a couple big bars here in the March and April of this year. Then you're going to get again going to get into the area that if you get into the bar from September of 2023, that's a high of 388 out there. And on that month, we did almost 23 million shares. For some context, last month you did 12 million, right? You are bumping into quite a bar as this thing fell from grace. Um, yeah, so restoration, though, they are up in dramatic fashion. I wonder, is Warren Buffett, maybe somebody in the den can help me out. Does Warren Buffett still have a big position in them? He did have a position in restoration. Uh, but yeah, interesting. What does that say about housing, right? You talk about high end. High end is doing fantastic, man. 
if you're doing well in this economy, you're doing well. And that's the bottom line, man. If you're in the upper echelon, right, the stock market's on fire. Real estate prices are on fire. Taxes are relatively low. Uh, we got the S&P at 5,600, man. We have the unemployment rate at 4.2%. And you have rates about to drop in that context. So maybe some people with uh, the means and the know-how are going to take some of that money, spend it at Restoration Hardware, and put it into their home. Because, yeah, it is upper end. That's where that thing had quite a run to 744. We're trading this morning, though, back above 300. You're going to pop $50, about 20% on the open for Restoration Hardware. Quite a run for Oracle, man. They're going to be up yet again today. Check it out, right? You check out the daily. This thing just doesn't stop. They come out with the earnings on Monday at 140. You're up $32 from where this thing was trading at on Monday. You're up yet again on Oracle shares. Yeah, as they lift their fiscal 2026 revenue, strong guidance all the way through that year. We'll be right back to talk about the it. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels, you'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns, you'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry August 9th and 23rd for more live trading action. For this month only, use code LARRYOG24 at checkout to save $50 off your first month as a subscriber to Live Trading Fridays for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LARRYOG24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got an S&P up by single digits right now. Positive by four points, kicking off the session at 56.05. NASDAQ 100 slightly dips in the red. We're trading right now negative 32 points. Dow positive by 48. Russell positive by 25. We jump over to gold. 
They're talking about gold in that Tiger's Den. You better believe it, man. Up to 2609. We're trading right now at 2606. Up $26, we'll call it, for the price of gold. You jump over to notes and bonds. A little bit of higher price, lower yield. The 10 year up seven ticks right now. And that's looking at a yield of 3.65%. And when we take a look at that yield curve, even comparing it just to the two year. Remember, we were inverted for quite a while. The two-year now, eight basis points above. The two-year, only at 3.57%. The 10-year, at 3.65%. And you see that, yeah, it is interesting when you look at the two-year still above the three-year. The two-year still above the five-year. Still above the seven-year. But you get to the 10-year. It's where finally that 10 year that for that extra three years rewards you for your hire. But that's the that's what they talk about. The two versus the 10. You should be rewarded for a higher interest rate for the longer you go. And we have the 10 year at about eight basis points above where the two year is right now. We got cuts coming down the line. And when five days, five days from right now, cuts. And yeah, they're talking about potentially the conversation of maybe 50 again. And you got the former New York Fed president bringing that case. Former New York Fed Chief Dudley sees a strong case for a 50 basis point rate cut. No, he is not a member of the Fed right now. OK, keep that in mind. He is the former New York Federal Reserve president. That has some weight for sure. But he is not a member of the Fed right now. Very distinct to make that um, distinction. Very important to make that distinction. He was speaking at the Bretton Woods Committee's annual Future of Finance Forum in Singapore. I think there's definitely a strong case for 50, whether they're going to do it or not. Well, That's not saying a lot in some instances, right? It is given the case. There's a strong case for it. It feels like that's the kind of thing that you say before you say, but I'm not in that camp or something like that, to put it lightly, right? Um, nonetheless. Then you get the article over here from the journal, Nick Timoroa, the Fed's rate cut dilemma, start big or small? Yeah. Where are they going? Well, they're probably going 25 but somehow, that conversation is almost getting rejuvenated this morning. I was watching Bloomberg this morning. They're talking about these two stories as well. And Dudley, rightfully so, he's the former New York Fed chief, okay? Doesn't get much more important than that. You have the Fed president, then the, the New York Fed president. Excuse me, you have the Federal Reserve chairman, and then you have the New York Fed chief. That's the, the totem pole and how it goes. But yeah, this article kind of rejuvenating that idea a bit, right? The cut, the amount of cuts over the next few months is going to be a lot more important than whether the first move is 25 or 50, which I think is a close call. It's talking about, you know, that's a senior advisor to Powell, and it is a close call, but I would agree. Whether they go 25 or 50, what's more important is where are they going to go from here, right? Now you look at where we go, what history said, months before and after the first rate cut, this is where the rate cut is, and this is the payroll growth the three-month average after that, all right? And you see in a couple instances here, right, they're late to the party. January 2021, we dipped to negative prices after. September 2007, we dipped to negative prices, okay, on payrolls after they began cutting. Then, of course, you have July 2019, July 95. Uh, yes, are the – sorry, I confused those. Jeez, they really don't do a good job with these colors here, huh? Yeah, I got a little lost in here. We got five lines. Ah, and we're right here. Okay. Yeah, but we're the line that hasn't completed yet. Yeah, so you got July. So 2019 and 1995, we held up well. You back it up to 2001 and 2007, things really declined. What I want to get to there, which I thought, I got a little confused in the moment, but... You look at 2001 and 2007, drastic financial collapses, right? Dot-com bubble and then the financial crisis. Pretty remarkable. If you're not coming out of there and they start cutting, things hold up pretty well. But we're going to find out. It starts in five days, and we find out where we go from there for sure. All right, we were talking about Oracle. So Larry Ellison, man, he's having quite a week. Where are we on Oracle? Uh, all right, I think I just had it on this side, maybe. Did I have it? Yeah, okay, here we go. So, Oracle bumps up its fiscal 2026 revenue forecast 
Now, what's intriguing here is they just do it right now, last night, but they just came out with their earnings. They almost had so much good that they saved some of the good to after their earnings, knowing that, man, we got so much good going on here on Oracle that we can't give it to the market all at once. So what we'll do is we'll come out with our earnings on Monday, and then what we'll do is Friday morning, we'll say that we're pushing the guidance forward for 2026 even further. The company plans for over $104 billion in revenue in 2029. Well, that's quite a forecast. Five years out, God bless anybody that can forecast their revenue five years out, and they get there, all right? But boy, you talk about volatility. But what's more important is 2026 revenue, 66 billion over a. Uh, 1.5 billion more than the market was looking for. Now, Ellison controls 42% of this company. You want to become the richest person in the world? Build a public company that's approaching $500 billion in market cap and almost own 50% of it, which is remarkable when you look at that run that he's had up there. The company's cloud infrastructure revenue grew 45%. Quicker than Amazon, Google, and Microsoft. Well, they're starting at a much smaller number, but they're also starting at a much smaller number market cap-wise, where they are right now for Oracle. I think it was 486, 470 right now. What just happened here? No, 470. Yeah, you did. You dipped below by about five bucks on the open. You're trading right now up by 5.3 percent, up eight dollars and sixty cents. What's remarkable is, okay, is that Allison. So this company has about two. 2.77 billion shares outstanding, right? You jump over the Analyze tab, 2.77 billion, that puts the market cap at about $170 per share at $470 billion. Ellison owns 1.16 billion shares, and that would be just basically the 2.77 at 42% ownership. 1.16 billion shares is what he owns. And this thing just traded up $40 from where it was on Monday. So you have Ellison. Yeah, now you've pulled back. We'll call it 35 Call it what you want, right? He's made like $35, $40 billion just Monday through Friday. You talk about a run, man, let alone backing things up when you were at 90 So you're at 70 What did I just say? He's got 1.16 billion shares. The stock's up $70 this year. Remarkable run for Oracle. Uh, Cloud, the place to be. You jump over to Amazon, up by about 47 cents. We jump to Microsoft. We check in on some of the cloud providers. Microsoft flat right now at 426. We jump over to Apple shares, trading up about uh, down one tenth percent for Apple. We jump over to Google shares, up by about seven tenths percent for Google. We check in on Boeing, down about 2.1 percent as they're dealing with the strike for Boeing. We check in on Restoration with their big numbers, up by 21 percent right now. We'll come back. We'll take a look at some other equities. We'll take a look at that gold. Thank you, folks. We'll be right back after the break. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. 
Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets all on the green. s and up by 12 right now, trading at 56.14. You get the NASDAQ 100. We catch a little bit of a bid on the open. There's your acceleration from 930. We're up almost 100 points in the NASDAQ 100 from 19,400 at the open. 19,478 right now. We check in on gold. Continuing to run. 26.11, 26.10. Gold up $30 right now. And boy, as my dad would say, it's Friday in the market. Gold can have some days on Friday, man. We jump over the dollar index, DXY, 100.95. We get below the 101 level. We hit 100.90 about on the low. We're negative by 41 pennies on the dollar right now. And we check in on the dollar yen. 140.57, we hit a low of 140.36. Coming into the opening bell, as I mentioned, you could get a 139 handle. As the yen strengthening, the dollar weakening, gold rising on a weaker dollar and you're seeing crude right now trading under $70 again at 69.62 but as I mentioned I'd go fill up that tank uh, if you're thinking about it because they may have already raised those prices but if you're getting Tuesday prices Wednesday prices of that gas tank 293 I saw I think that was Tuesday Monday Tuesday 293 uh, at Sam's to fill up that gas tank gotta love it all right what else do we got going on how about Uber there's a pop for you up by 5.7%. Now, check out this one, right? Now, Uber, story out there, Uber, and this is the press release. They put out stories out there as well, but Uber and Waymo, which is Alphabet, Google, expand partnership to bring autonomous ride hailing to Austin and Atlanta. It's happening, folks. It's all happening. It's all happening right now. Austin and Atlanta, Waymo One and Uber, they're coming at you, man. Beginning early next year, Waymo and Uber will bring autonomous ride hailing to Austin and Atlanta only in the Uber app. Yeah. Uber will manage and dispatch a fleet of Waymo's fully autonomous, all-electric Jaguar I-Pace vehicles that will grow to hundreds over time. Riders who request an Uber X, okay, may be matched with a Waymo for qualifying trips. What is that going to mean, right? Are you going to have the option? It's going to be interesting to see. I think they're going to give you the option if you're selecting an Uber. But guess what? That's only for a period of time. Eventually, it's just going to be, no, no, no. This is the deal. Accept it. Self-driving cars are here. They're safe. We're using them. We're not there just yet, though. I think we're going to have to ease into that. But nonetheless, the market likes that as you got Uber up by 5.6%. And check out the chart. I was looking at this when I was going over the store. I said, you know what? Our man, Bud Rolfs, the channel master, what do you do? I mean, look at this channel, man. And this is coming from, okay? Where does so you say to yourself, you put it on a daily, right? And you say, well, where's he getting? Where's he getting these channel lines, right? It's kind of bouncing off these relatively well. Look at this, right? Back in the beginning of the year, you almost touched that trend line, okay? 
and you break out of the channel, you come back, you test it, okay, you get to a low of 57.22, and then you trade up to $82. Well, what do you do? You come back, you hit the channel line again. You come back, you break into the channel, you hit the bottom, you test it, you break out, and what are we doing? We're bouncing off that channel line again to the upside. Now, where does that channel come from? You put it on a weekly, it was a very well-defined channel coming out of the lows of 2022, okay? You can see, you start that area, at $23 and you bounced around in that channel line until we broke out of there in November of 2023. We bring things current again, but that is quite a little breakout to the upside. And you take a look at Uber right now, market cap wise, you're looking at a company of $151 billion and we're up 5.7% today for Uber. That's a strong stock, man, as they're getting into self-driving technology and you know, it makes me think of Tesla, and it should make you think of Tesla if you're an Uber investor, okay? And the self-driving battle that is going to ensue. And yes, Tesla will be a player in that market. They have to be to survive with the valuations that they have. But keep in mind, they're not going to be the only player in town. China's going to be there, okay? As in their electric vehicle cars, they're going to be there, and Uber's going to be a player even though they're not producing those cars themselves. Yeah, and they're not going to have to buy them all for Tesla. As you're seeing with Waymo, it's happening right now. Tesla doesn't have it happening. And I would be hard-pressed, folks, okay? You want to, if you're a Tesla investor, have the conversation about who is going to be comfortable jumping in that car and how Elon is going to handle potential problems that come about when, unfortunately, there are going to be accidents, there's going to be fatalities. There are so many fatalities every single day on the roads every year that you can improve health and safety standards dramatically by self-driving vehicles. And unfortunately, there's still going to be fatalities that have come about. And this is going to be a nuanced deal to get, for lack of a better word, a nuanced deal. Uh, it is going to take some nuance to convince Americans to jump into self-driving vehicles when those stories hit of horror stories that are going to happen, unfortunately. But being on the roads is dangerous, and it's not going to eliminate that 100%. But it probably will, over the long haul, make it safer. But you're going to have to have trust and reliability. And Elon's been talking about self-driving cars for six, seven, eight years, right? It's going to be very difficult when you're dealing with something like that. As an investor, sure, I can handle over-promising and under-delivering if it benefits the share price. But as a consumer of self-driving vehicles, I'm not sure I'm going to trust everything coming out of Tesla, even if it's getting echo chambered on X, I think I would much more likely to trust Uber with Google cars to at least know that I'm not getting a PR blitz from the richest man in the world. And that's not political. It ties into the value of Tesla. The stories are coming out. They get a lot of competition coming down the line. They're not selling the cars they had. And this company is still valued at $741 billion. I mean, I just showed you Uber's value at $150 billion, and they're going to have self-driving vehicles starting in a few months. Keep those in mind, because they're going to matter eventually. Everything catches up eventually. All right? Speaking of, DJT, up by 1.4% today. You think this chart looks bad, okay? And no matter what politics aside, this stock makes no sense. But we've had those stocks. GameStop, right? No difference between GameStop's run and DJT. Uh, pretty remarkable when you put this in context, though. We're back to $16. Day after the assassination attempt, you run up to 46 Santa Friends, pretty remarkable if you ever were going in on Trump. You bought this like the day or two before he survives the assassination attempt. You could have even potentially bought it on margin. I don't know how stocks like this work, if you can margin them. But at $30, you might be able to. And if you margin this thing, the day or two before he survived that assassination temp, when it seemed like you actually lost everything, you're back to 15 bucks. Now, that's just the daily, okay? But, yeah, how about encapsulating the real run-up? I mean, look at this. Politics aside, if you're playing the meme equities, okay, and this is a meme equity, it might be the ultimate one, make sure you don't get carried away to put it lightly. Pretty remarkable the run that that thing has had following the day after that assassination attempt. All right, what else do we got? Let's see what other equities we got moving this morning. Yeah, we got Adobe. They issue some softer guidance. ADBE is their symbol, and they're down almost 10%. How about it? 
on a positive mark of a good day last night. They're out with their numbers. And the story out there from Adobe. We'll finish this up when we get back. But you got Adobe. Soft fourth quarter revenue guy up there. No. Hi, you folks. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com and hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. Friday action. You got 24 minutes into the trading session, and the S and P's right now up by about 20. You got the Nasdaq up 35, Dow up 180 points, and how about the Russell? Yeah, catching a bid to the tune of 1.6 percent for the Russell and gold. One of the stories of the day, hitting a new all-time high of 26.11. You got a lot of the mining equities trading higher, of course, folks. Great time to try out my dad's gold report. He's got new issues out every Monday. When you sign up, you immediately gain access to the archives that are in there of the of the newsletters that he's done. Uh, check it out, man. We got gold rocking, and I imagine this is not the end of it because we still got – Fed hasn't even begun cutting yet. Yes, there's a lot priced in there, but nonetheless. So what do we got going on? I mentioned Adobe, ADBE, down by 10%. Some of the movers, restoration, up by 19.99. We'll call it 20% at 307 you got Uber trading higher, up by 6.4%. Boeing is striking down by 2.3%. And we'll do a little rapid fire to end things in, stores, in terms of stories I had pulled up. How about quick? When I talked about this yesterday, right, it says a day ago, it was 25.
That was it. 25. Conversation was over. We were six days out from a Fed meeting, and 25 was the consensus. Look at what it is now. We're back to 50-50. Right? Pretty remarkable. You got Dudley out there. You have Tim Aroa writing about the possibilities as well. It'd be pretty stark if they went with 50 at this point. Pretty stark when you look at where we were, where we've been, where we're going. Uh, you check out housing. U.S. housing market away boost after worst key season in years. The spring season, so the weakest sales in a dozen years. Yeah, and more people expected to list homes as mortgage rates fall. Going to be so interesting to see how demand goes up because buyers can afford more with a lower interest rate, yet sellers coming back into that market. You're going to see it. It's going to happen. And then China, they're raising the retirement age. But guess what? They're only raising it to 63 for men and women to 55 and women for ordinary workers to 58 instead of 55. We'll take those in the U.S., man, right? Uh, and look at the populations of China. And pretty remarkable. I mean, they were at, in the 90s, 16 million net people a year. As recently as 2016, they're at 8 million people. And they have peaked on their population. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great Friday. Stay tuned for Basil. Have a safe weekend. We'll see you Monday, folks. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology.